Hello and welcome to Faces of Ghana on EN TV with me, Philip Abutiati. On today's edition of the show, I'll be speaking to a 10 year old Ghanaian who happens to be a bestseller on Amazon, but he also has publications which have been accepted into the Library of Congress in the US. What inspires him and what keeps him going? Well, we get to find out from him on the show today. But before we do that, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on all our social media platforms. Hi, Nicholas. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you doing today? Good. Good to see you. Yes, it's very nice to see you too. I've read about you. I've watched your videos. You've been, I mean, you are doing great. Thank you. Thank you very much. So who is Nicholas? Well, I'm a 10 year old published author. I published my first book at the age of seven, and I now have three books published and cataloged into the Library of Congress. I also have a nonprofit called Books Without Borders, where I donate books and school supplies to kids who need the proper tools to succeed. And off camera, I'm just a kid who likes playing with my friends, playing on my Xbox, playing basketball, soccer, and so much more. Nicola, so tell me, what do you write about? Well, my first book is called Kale and Kyle, The Walking Dictionary, Election Day. And that's about a brother and a sister who go head to head in an election. My second book is Kale and Kyle, The Walking Dictionary, A Puppy Surprise. And like the title, it's about a puppy surprise. <laughs> and my latest book that came out in October, well, that's called It's Santa Really Real. And like the title again, it's about, is Santa really real? <laughs> I see. So we'll go a little bit more into what goes into writing of your books. But how did you even start writing in the first How did you know you could write? How did you think of writing? My journey first started when I had a book signing at Barnes & Nobles. And I only thought my, my family and my friends would come down and support me. But it turns out I was completely wrong because people from all over came just to buy an autograph copy of my book. And then I got picked up by Whoopi Goldberg, and, well, Whoopi Goldberg, she ordered me on the view. And then Steve Harvey interviewed me, and that's when I started selling thousands of copies of my book. Have you, were you born in Ghana? Have you been in Ghana all this while? When did you come to Ghana? Well, I, I wasn't born in Ghana, but my first visit was when I was four years old. And this is actually my third visit. So we've seen stories about you donating a wheelchair to um, one guy who is physically challenged. How did you meet him and I mean, how, what was the conversation between you and him? Oh yes, uh, Samuel, because I actually came across him on, on, your, on your article it, on the news. And on, at yen.com? Yes. Oh wow. Yes, and it was saying that he called four hours to school every day. So once I saw that, I told my mom I had to help. So when I saw his reaction on video, because I didn't actually go meet him in person, you know, that was really touching because he had tears in his eyes. So I'm sure you've had a feel of Ghana's educational system. You've schooled in Ghana here before, or you're schooling in Ghana here. Uh, yes, I, I actually am. And when I was four years old, I went to preschool here. So. Yeah, I want to know, what do you like about Ghana? You know, I love the kind people. I got to meet a Tutu Nana Ose, Tutu the second, the Santi Hini. We had a one-on-one -on -one conversation and I got to shake his hand. So that was actually an amazing film. Did you see the Golden too? No, but next time we go, I, I do want to. I really do want to. And one thing I really like is the coconuts on the street because you won't really find that in America. So that's just amazing. I just get to drink the nice coconut rice. <laughs> you love coconuts? Yes, I love it. I own your coconuts. <laughs> Ooh, a coconut, yes. <laughs> I mean, combining education with all the other things you do, how do you, you know, strike the balance so that your education doesn't get affected? Well, first I'd say education comes first because that's where I get the proper skills and tools to succeed. So I'm focused on education, but with my nonprofit, Books Without Borders, I'll, I'll see a call, so I really want to help. And then I'll tell my mom and we'll format a team. And that's how, that's how we get it started. And then with my writing, I'll think of an idea and I'll write in a notebook 
and then I'll come back to it in two weeks, three weeks, maybe even a month. So I'd say that my nonprofit and writing are like a hobby. You made mention of your mom. I'm sure she is a strong pillar in your life. She supports you a lot. Yes, she does. Mm. So, what do you like about your mom? Um, I love how, of how good she is in encouraging me, and she she encourages me not never to stop fighting and to try as hard as I can. So, if you have to say something to your mom on camera, what would you tell her? I want you to look in the camera and say something to mommy. I'd say. Thank you for being such a phenomenal mom and encouraging me and taking me this far. What goes into writing your books? How do you even start from right from when you, the idea comes until you get it published? What goes into it? Well, it's like I just think of an idea. Uh, I use my imagination. I think, I think, I think, and that's how I, that's how I come up with ideas for my books. But for Santa Rolly Road, that was a little different because the, the I actually asked that question to my mom. I went to my mom and I said, Mom, is Santa really real? Because that's how that one came about. Oh, wow. And I see a lot of graphics. Who does the designing? We'll draw it and then we'll send it to a professional illustrator to actually make it look pretty. <laughs> wow. So let's talk about the future, Nicholas. Growing up, if you become old like mommy, what profession or what line of work would you like to, you know, embark on? Well, I wouldn't, I feel like my true calling is to be a philanthropist. But that's my career choice. I want to become a mechanical engineer because I want to invent things to help people. What are some of the interesting inventions you've thought about? Things that if you had the power, you know, you would have brought into existence, right? Like right now. Uh, I don't want to invent an extremely advanced water purifier to help countries all across the globe. Hmm. Water purifier. Yes. It means you've identified an issue of, you know, uh, inadequate potable water around the globe. Yes. Hmm. So tell us what you are working on. Well, on my, with my nonprofit, because I actually have two things I'm working on. So with my nonprofit, I'm going to be renewing children's healthcare cards here in Ghana with my mixed Christmas extravaganza, which is something I do yearly for Christmas, of course, because of the name, mixed Christmas extravaganza. And then uh, what I'm going to be doing with my career is I'm actually, I actually created a TV show and we're going to be shooting a pilot and well next year so what's that show about uh the show is going to be about me and what i like doing off camera so nicolas tell us about your ambassador well i'm actually the new face of the kid media palette that's nice you met steve harvey did you you were on his show yes i got to meet steve harvey and that was a lot of fun because he was a very funny person. He he had me laughing the whole time. He donated 555 of my books to my nonprofit Bookstop Borders. So he actually bought them and he donated to me. Yes. Oh, that's nice. If you want to buy my book, you could go to my website, nicholaspuama.com. And if you want to follow me on social media, it's at nicholaspuama. I mainly upload on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube.